Go away, robot. When I was when I was a kid, like a kid in elementary school, I liked anime. Well, I liked Robotech. Um, I didn't know it was anime. Um, that was, but I really, really liked it. It was amazing. Actually, at my babysitter's, there was a fight. I tell my listener no one does this, but um, I think half the kids wanted to watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I wanted to watch uh, Robotech. Or I think it was was it on there? I don't know. Um, uh, but anyways, half the kids wanted to watch something else, and the other one wanted to watch Robotech. And, uh, the rule in the TV room was that if you got there first, you could, you could, you had control of the TV room. So people started getting there like ten minutes early, and it was like fifteen minutes early. And was, as soon as it was like an hour early, we were like camped out in the TV room, like to <laughs> came out like at three thirty or four thirty or something like that. Um, and we like run from the, the the school to get to the babysitters so we can. Uh, so uh, yeah, I but I didn't even know it was anime. Uh, and then in college, I was writing for the newspaper and. They're like, oh, this anime thing's really big. Cover, go cover the uh, UCLA Anime Club. And I was like, okay, uh, damn it, I can't find any information on the UCLA Anime Club. I went into the the office of student like student association club stuff, and I was like, oh, here's the name of the president. I, don't know. I called the phone number. It was dead. It was uh, did nothing. Email didn't work. I was like, oh, these people graduated. So I'm like, great. I'm like, oh, my my articles do this really sucks. It's like due like the next day or something. And I'm walking down Broom Walk, and I see like a sandwich board. It says, Japanese Animation Club meeting tonight, uh, 6 to 10 p.m. And I was like, oh, it's tonight. And I was like, oh my god, I have a final or midterm the next day. All right, I guess I'm going to go to the same. I was like, 6 to, 6 to 10? What the F? How long, how long is this freaking meeting? How long can you talk about anime? I was like, all right, whatever. So I told them that, you know, it's from paper, blah, blah, blah. They're like, oh, great. And then when you go down there and introduce yourself to the president, Nati, and all the stuff, and I was like, okay. So I did, and then they're like, "Oh, well, we come to the meeting and sit down, and I'll, I'll announce after the meeting if anyone want, if you want to interview anyone, you know." So I'm like, "Okay, after the meeting, I'm gonna have to stick with the whole thing." So I sit down, and I'm like, uh, "Okay." Now T goes up, and he goes, "All right, today we're watching the first episode of Evangelion, the second episode of Escaflone, um, Marmalade Boy, and Slayers." And then he leaves. And then the lights dim. And I was like, that's it? I mean, that, that was their meeting, right? And then then they showed the first episode of Adam William. And uh, it ends in a horrible cliffhanger. And uh, they show the second episode of Us the And it ends in a horrible cliffhanger. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, I was like, <laughs> I have to come back next week. Because I need to know what happens. And they showed Marmalade Boy, and I think actually, Mar no, Marmalade Boy didn't end in a clear, but the Slayers episode, I don't know which series, which version it was from, um, it ended in a huge, horrible cliffhanger as well. And I was like, and then, I was like, all right, I gotta interview people, blah, blah, I stand up and make an introduction, so people give me their information. And then there's this girl, Ardeth, who was like, really bubbly and cheery, and blah, blah, blah. And uh, she seemed like really into anime, and I was like, okay, um, I said, I was like, I'm going to interview her. And they talked to her, and we geeked out about Rick Hunter, because we both had crushes on Rick Hunter. Uh, hilarious, because now Tony Oliver directs me. Um, and, uh, and although I think I'm one of the few people who really liked Min Mei, I like wanted to be Min Mei. Everybody else that I met wanted to slap Min Mei and kill Min Mei. And I was like, no, I, I used to sing her songs in English, like, you know, when I was however, 10, 12, I don't know. But, um, so, uh, yeah, so we, our interview over the phone was like, it was like an hour and a half, it was like way longer than it should have been, and we were like, oh. and I secretly thought to myself, this chick artist seems like she would have a very large anime collection, and let's befriend her so I can <laughs> borrow all her tapes, <laughs> back then it was tapes, um, and so I did, and that's what happened, and we're still friends this day, uh, good friends, we actually lived together for a while in college. Um, but uh, her and her friend uh, Shizuki, who's also my good friend now, they worked at a company called Digital Manga, and they made these CD-ROMs, interactive CD-ROMs, that basically scanned in manga, recorded all the dialogue into Japanese, English, and Spanish, and then you could play it, this manga CD that had limited animation and coloring, and uh, you could switch between different, what you're reading, different languages, and what you're hearing. Any combination of Japanese, Japanese-Japanese, Japanese-Spanish, English-Japanese, 
English Spanish, like anything like that. So they did that and uh, then they wanted to do anime and they were like, come in, you have to come in. And, oh, when they were doing the CD rock, they were like, come in, we're having auditions, you have to audition. And I like, came in and auditioned and I got a small part. And then, then they were like, oh, we're going to do the, the, the president always thought big. He was like, we want to do anime production now. Uh, and so then they hired me as a producer. Uh, and we got two licenses. One was uh, Tenshi Ni Nada Mom, I'm Gonna Be an Angel, and the other one was Kuri Kuri at the LCO. And I auditioned for both shows, since I worked at the company, and I got cast in both shows, one as uh, Silky and the other one as Mami Me. Um, and dude, I, the day that I, when I got Mami Me, I was like, so sad it was. I told Arden, I said, I never do another voice in anime, and it's, it's ridiculous. At that point, that would have been only my second voice ever that I've been able to do it anime. But I was like, I never get cast as anything else in anime. I don't care. I will die happy because I get to voice on anime. That's how much I love that part. That's so true. Well, I mean, it's it's like I mean, it's kind of like it's weird now because I've done so many roles now. It's like I don't know. Now I guess it's not true. I don't know. I'd be like, ah, I'll be like uh, Al Bundy <laughs> when I was 23. I did this show. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, that's kind of that was a short version. <laughs> um, I think it comes and goes, you know, like, it's like any wants in life. You want something, and then, then that happens at your different point in your life, and then you want something else, and, and then if you don't get it, like, you know, at, in the moment, you're like, oh, it's the end of the world, but then, like, five years later, or even, like, a week later, you're like, oh, you forgot about it. Like, it's not, um, yeah, like, uh, Mom Mimi was, a, was really close to my heart and important, as was, like, uh, Nanoka and, uh, in, uh, Kaze. Um, a lot of, there, there's a lot of, for different reasons, a lot of, you know, like Akira from Lucky Star was like super, super fun. Um, there's so many different reasons, like same with like Hare and Goo, like Goo was really fun to play too. But there's like a lot of different things that, um, roles and um, that you kind of gravitate to. And so, uh, yeah, there's, uh, yeah, I don't, I, it's hard, it's like, there's not, there's not just like the one, you know what I mean? So. Um, well, when I very, very first, first started act, voice acting, it was hard for me to get in the door because I was a producer first, and most people were like, you know, like, everybody wants to be a voice actor, right? So they're like, oh, there's a producer girl, she wants to be a voice actor, she's probably not any good. Um, or they were like, oh, shit, she's like a producer, so she's gonna come and like steal all our secrets and tell them to other studios. So, uh, but eventually that I like changed people's minds and that turned around and it's great. Um, but yeah, it's totally different. Like in the beginning when I started, it was mostly, I worked mostly in anime, um, and there was a lot of it, you know? Like I think during the height of like, you know, around when I was doing Out of the Seven, I was like on seven or eight shows at once. And now it's like three. So it's kind of, uh, yeah, it's like the industry is very different. But, you know, the other thing that's different is like, now I'm not only exclusively doing anime, like I have an agent, you know. Uh, I'm with uh, Atlas Talent and um, I love them, they're great. Uh, and I get to go on auditions for really cool things. Like I got to record, I got what was in Bioshock 2. That was really cool. Um, I, I've, I've done mocap now, you know. I, I've done like other things with like, I was in an episode of Scooby Doo where I got to meet George Takei um, <laughs> and uh, uh, Matthew Lillard. Um, so it's like, it's, yeah, it's, it's totally different now. Like, it's, it's different now. It's like, I guess it's out of necessity. I think if uh, on one hand, it's like, I'm sad that the industry is not doing well. But it also forced me, like, kick myself in the butt to have to go out and find other work instead of just being, like, comfortable doing the one thing. I will always love anime because I started out as a fan, you know? But also, I, I, I don't know how you guys feel as fans, but I kind of... I'm a little disappointed by the content coming out. I feel like there's lack of creative stories. Yeah. Really and I feel like... Comic yeah, I feel like... But I feel like that's partly because the industry's not doing well. So they're catering to a certain type of hardcore fan. They're catering to a certain, because they know that, that those fans will buy that. And the other people will just download it, 
you know, so, I mean, come on, everyone needs to make money, so, uh, that, that's the thing that kind of, like, I, I, I long for the day where I get excited about some sort of, sort of kind of story or something that I haven't seen in a while, and it's, it's been a long time since, like, you know, since a show like Foodie Cootie, like, you look at Foodie Cootie and, like, it's not just fluff, it's not just some weird sci-fi thing, like, before we, before we started recording that show, myself, the other producer, Shizuki, and Mark Handler, the, the script writer, the ADR writer, and the director, sat down and we had, like, a four-hour meeting talking about analyzing the show and what we thought it meant, because it didn't matter, like, there was one thing as a producer that I felt very strongly about that show, is that it, it didn't matter if you were in agreement about what the show meant, because I think it could mean a lot of things, and it's really full of a lot of metaphors and a lot of hints and stuff like that, because they don't, he didn't like, Tsunamaki-san didn't just like hand it to you on a plate, you had to kind of figure it out and kind of discover things for yourself. But I felt like as a team, creative team, we needed to have our own opinion of it. I didn't exactly, I didn't exactly 100%, like, Overall, I agreed with Mark. We had the same idea, but there's certain specifics that you, Mark, and I kind of differed on. But um, but we talked about it and we're like, oh, what about this? And oh, you know, like, why do you think, you know, Mami Mi calls Naota Taku? Doesn't make much sense. You know, she should call him like Naokun or Naokchan. Oh, wait, her, uh, her ex boyfriend, his brother's name is Ta Tatsuki. Sorry. But it's like, it's a replacement, you know. She called, then she starts, like, when Naota leaves her, she starts calling the terminal core Taku. There's a reason for that. That means like she's trying to fill this gap in her life. Like from a character point of view, like that's like I can just go and be like, oh, it's it's crazy, whatever, whatever. But there's like, you know, it's 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 like a coming of age tale. Which a lot of people are like, oh well, why don't they make a sequel to it? I'm like, because that story's over. I mean, if you're gonna make a sequel, it's more like Mary Poppins, I think. Haruko is like the alien Mary Poppins. She comes to town, makes everything kind of crazy, makes you know, makes Nalta get to be a kid, you know? And, and Tomaki-san said that, like, hey, this thing about the problem with Nalta is, like, he is so eager to become an adult that he doesn't become a kid. But what he doesn't realize is he can't be a proper adult until he's been a proper kid. Like, until he's gone through being a kid. And, like, that's why, that's why Haruko so, oh, because she lets him and she forces him to be a kid. Then you know at the end of the show that he's going to be fine. So we had a sequel, I think Hard Glad to like come and go to some other kid. I don't know. <laughs> Same thing again.